Hi, everybody. In addition to the stuff we've already talked about, like seller credits, personal property included, and those fee issues, here are some other terms that you should talk about with your landlord at the beginning and some other terms you should at least be aware of. These contract terms can get really complex quick. They're all great examples of why you should have a real estate attorney or a real estate agent on your team. Rental deposits. Don't forget the rental deposits you paid when you first rented the place. Things like security or cleaning deposits or last month's rent. These deposits are normally transferred to the new owner, whoever that is, at the close of escrow. But in this case, you're the new owner. You should get that money. It's best to mention the deposits when you first start talking to your landlord about buying the place so there's no confusion about what's supposed to happen to that money at closing. You should be able to get all the rental deposit money back at closing. If you're cash poor, the return of that rental deposit money could help you pay your closing costs. could be very helpful. Closing date. Your landlord probably doesn't care too much when the potential sale closes, but you should ask them when they want it to close anyway if only because it might help your landlord visualize that big payday and make them more motivated to sell to you. Hopefully, your landlord will start thinking about how they'll spend all that money they'll make when they sell a place to you. Since you're already living there, the closing date isn't as important as in most other sales. It's probably not the end of the world for anyone if the contract has to be amended to close a week or two or three later than originally agreed to in the contract. However, the sooner the sale closes, the better. A reasonable planning time frame from when you first approach your landlord to closing would be in the ballpark of two months. If it takes a lot longer than two months, that increases the odds that something will happen unexpectedly to kill the deal. So sooner is better than later. Also, for your landlord, the idea of getting the money sooner is probably a lot more exciting than the idea of getting the money later. One more thing, if it looks like your lease might end before the sale is completed, that might add a complication. Your current lease might need to be extended for a bit. Okay, we covered the big terms in the contract, but there could be other weird terms in your contract that translate into fees you have to pay. Okay, I hope you've gotten a good feel for some of the things that show up when you buy a home, especially the things that cost you money. It seems the real estate industry has a very strong tendency to just gloss over how big closing costs and prepaids can be for buyers. I think they're afraid of scaring you off. But I want you to know all about the closing costs now so you know how to negotiate the best deal possible with your landlord and you don't have big surprises later on, or at least fewer surprises. Okay, now in the next section we'll talk about home inspections. It's another dry but extremely important subject. <laughs> then after that, we'll talk about the closing process and we're almost done, yay!